Ryan Moss from the Northeast Ohio Stream Quality Mining Coordinator for the Division of Natural Areas and Preserves. Today we're out on the West Fork of Little Beaver Creek State Wild and Scenic River in pursuit of the Dobson fly larva. A little bit about the Dobson fly larva are also known as the Helgramite. They're in the order of Megaloptera, which consists of Dobson flies, fish flies, and alder flies. And they're in the family Corydalidae. Um, the reason that we're on a site like this is that you need very high quality water in order to find Dobson flies. They're very sensitive to pollution, so you need very high quality streams to find them. The habitat that they prefer is areas like this ripple area here with large cobble because it provides protection for them to hide from fish and other predators. Um, the larva itself is actually probably one of the most fierce predators of the macroinvertebrate world. Uh, they feed on anything from other macroinvertebrates to small fish. And when we find one here in a little bit, I'll show you and you can actually see why they're so fierce. Um, they spend about two to three years of their life in the water in the larval stage before they go and pupate. They do go through complete metamorphosis, so they'll go from egg to larva to pupa to adult. Um, after two to three, spending about two to three years in the water, they'll crawl up on the shoreline, kind of like this shoreline here, and they'll burrow down into moist substrate where they'll pupate. And normally that takes anywhere from, from about two to three weeks for them to pupate. After they pupate and emerge as an adult, males only live two to three days. Um, they cannot feed as adults, so their pure purpose is to reproduce. The one really cool thing about adult males is that they grow their mouth parts or their mandibles out into these large, almost looks like tusks or horns. Um, so they're very intimidating looking. Uh, the females actually do not grow their mandibles out and they can still bite you as an adult and it's a very painful bite whether you get bit by the larva or the adult. It's almost like being pinched by a pretty large crayfish. Um, when the females lay their eggs, they lay their eggs, usually about a thousand eggs in a cluster, and they lay them on the underside of overhanging vegetation or anything overhanging the stream. Uh, the egg clusters actually look like bird droppings and commonly are laid on the side of bridges, and you can see that in the summer, if you're paddling down the stream, you can look up and actually see the egg clusters on the side of the bridge. Uh, they take usually about two weeks to hatch, and the larva will fall. After they hatch, will fall from that bridge or from that overhanging vegetation into the stream below, where they'll begin their life in the larval stage. Um, that's a little bit about the Dobson fly larva. What we're going to do is we're actually going to go out here and see if we can find one, and then we'll go over some ID characteristics of them and a little bit more about them. Okay, everybody, here's the Dobson fly larva, a.k.a. the Helgramite. They can get about four inches in length. This one's probably about three inches. As you can see, they're very intimidating looking. A lot of people are afraid to hold these, and I don't blame them because they can produce a very painful bite if they do bite you. If you tend to just let them crawl on you and you don't grab them, they won't bite you. Um, one of the ID characteristics for these guys is they are very large in size. They get a lot bigger than any of our other macroinvertebrates. Um, you can see those mandibles in the front almost appear like a, they look like an aquatic centipede. They have six legs and they have these lateral appendages that go the length of their body as you can see here. On the underside of them, underneath those lateral appendages, they have small gill tufts. They're really hard to see on this guy. You can kind of see one right there at the end of my thumb and they go the length of the body. Those will distinguish this from a fish fly larva, which is also in the same order. Um, another thing that'll distinguish this from a fish fly, which these can get mistaken for, is that their ma mandibles are projected forward on the Dobson fly, whereas on the fish fly, they have a real domed head, and those mandibles are really hard to see. And like I said before, they, the fish flies lack those gill tufts along the bottom side of their body. Overall, probably one of the coolest macroinvertebrates you can find. Very popular with tying, um, with fly fishermen that'll tie these up for bait. Uh, very good bait for smallmouth. Um, and fish tend to really like to eat these. So overall, very very cool bug that requires very good water quality, so an excellent find when you can find these. 
Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions regarding stream quality monitoring, macro invertebrates, or the Scenic Rivers program, you can contact your local Scenic Rivers manager or stream quality monitoring coordinator, or you can visit us on ohiodnr.com.